really, really glad to be here. Right, so without any delay, let's go to the topic at hand, which is Martha and Mary. Just give me a second, present. Yeah, so we're going to be looking at Martha and Mary. So Martha and Mary, right? So uh, controversy of both both them sisters, you know, sisters' relationship sometimes like oh, really, really, really dynamic. Sometimes so loving, sometimes like worst enemies. I've got three daughters, so yeah, and I myself have two sisters. So sometimes so volatile that relationship, and I, and I and so obvious that we see that that kind of relationship here in Martha and Mary. So I I always misunderstood. In the beginning, I was like, always Martha is the bad person. She's like, Ooh, she didn't want Jesus. She was just, just focused on the kitchen. So I, I, uh, I, I used to like condemn Martha and looked at Mary and like, she's a good one. And then as I got older and hopefully wiser, I, uh, I sort of end marriage and household chores and everything. And I began to think to myself, hey, Martha, she was doing really something that was so necessary, you know? You can't just leave with Jesus. Jesus comes to your house, you can't just leave it. Like very, very um, more, uh, what you'd say, ah, I think I, I'm, I, I, I would be Martha too. So how do I move on to this? Something is happening here, which is this allowing me to move on to my next slide. Let's try something else. Okay, so. This session is, uh, it's, I'm sure like many of your sessions are interactive. So it's a lot of speaking, a lot of listening. I'm going to listen because I believe that all of us have got so much to share, right? Women, we, we are so wise. We, we, we just like hit on the spot. So it's, it's a, such a good session for us to learn from one another. So that's how it's going to be. So let's move on. Let's start off with, so I'm just going to pick up on two main dialogues here. Uh, one is uh, Martha telling to telling complaining to Jesus, and then Jesus responds. So the whole focus is just going to be there. So let's just look at the first one. She came to him and asked him, "Lord, don't you care? Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me? So just focus on this thing, sir. That my sister has left me to do the work by myself." Tell her to help me. Ah, so we a lot of things to pick up from this particular uh, her, her tone of voice. What was she accusing? She was accusing Jesus of something and then telling Jesus that, hey, you're supposed to be doing something. You're not doing that. You're looking at me in the kitchen and you're just simply keeping quiet and just spending time with Mary. Here I am slogging away in the kitchen. Don't you, seriously, don't you care? I mean, and she put actually, I would think that she, Put it quite nicely if it was me i would just go and tell the lord off i'll say hello excuse me nicely chatting away here i'm doing the work uh, so this i would think that this language is quite very nice i would i would think um i don't know how many of you are like me i'm i'm, I'm just like black just kind of person just like go and speak so now your turn to think about these what strikes you about these relationships what strikes you about martha and mary their relationship Okay, so your turn to speak. Anyone? If you are not comfortable speaking, maybe you can put it on chat. So what strikes you first about this relationship? So let's just look at uh, the relationship one, one by one. So we'll just look at first Martha and Mary. Just Martha and Mary. Just this. Joyce, like you yeah. just said, you know, it's very typical of two sisters and mm -hmm. it reminds me of my relationship with my sister mm -hmm. yeah because uh, i mean on some occasions she is martha and some occasions uh, you know i am martha and we do a role reversal mm -hmm. but it is a very very human thing i think yeah. yeah and i think from the women perspective yes it is you know that service and that cooking is a big thing the uh, hospitality is a big thing. So yeah. yes, I identify with both of them. 
yeah okay. uh, in different at different occasions so they are very much you, you can you can resonate with them the both yes. yeah okay yes. Yeah. Yes. anyone else what is their relationship also maybe focus on like she said that yeah they, it's so common for sisters to just do this jabbering anyone else I think both of them actually love Jesus. They are, Jesus has come into their home, mm. but one preferred to stay and listen to His word. One mm. was uh, she was going out of her way to uh, serve Him in yeah. in another in another way. Yeah. So both are serving. Yes, you would think. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Now let's look at Martha and Jesus. Let's look at both their relationships. Anyone? Uh, I think it's a kind of a love-hate relationship. At times you love that person and when you're doing all the work, you kind of hate that per your sister. So it's a kind of love-hate relationship, I could say. Okay, so you're, you're, you're still focused on Martha. You're talking about Martha and Mary, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Right, thank you. Thank you so much. Love-hate relationship. Yes, so true. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at uh, Martha and Jesus. How about Martha and Jesus? This relationship what do you think what kind of relationship do you think Martha had with Jesus so I'm, I'm I'm just getting answers no so no answer is correct or wrong yeah everyone's okay this is my she thought by serving by serving Jesus she's showing her love towards Jesus yes true. her correct. way of showing love towards Jesus by serving him and being hostile and making things ready like a good meal and things like that so she thought that's the way uh, she could show her love to Jesus. Correct. So maybe the kind of person, you know, I'd rather stay in the background, do all this work, and that's my way of that that personality. Yes, not the kind of chatter. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So anyone else? But I think, uh, but I think she is also somebody who could really like you know tell off like how you just said, like how she just went and she just you know, told him what she felt. So that openness from mm -hmm. her end, that whatever's on my mind, I can tell you all about it. Yeah, yeah. And so Other than just, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mulling over it, she uh -huh. said, probably she felt better. We don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. she would have after she, you know, vented out what she felt. So she yeah. had that kind of rapport with Jesus where she mm -hmm. could go and tell him that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also it, probably also Jesus allowed that kind of openness, you know. Yes, maybe she was very. Uh, Jesus was very close to the family, a very yeah. uh, close friend of the family, so they could speak to Jesus, you know, very openly, and uh, uh, like you know, uh, he was so so close to them that it was, didn't matter how they spoke to him. They spoke to him in a conversation as a very very good friend, close friend. Yeah. So although he was an important guest, they, they had that, that liberty. Excellent. Okay, how about Mary and Jesus? Their relationship. If those people who, if anyone here, want, maybe you want to put it on chat also, feel free to do so. But Mary and Jesus, what do you think their relationship was? Mary must have been the quieter one compared to Martha. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she preferred just to sit at his feet and admire Jesus, yeah. look into his face, you know, and, and uh, listen to him very attentively because she felt there was so much wisdom in his talk, perhaps, so much of love in his talk, perhaps. And that captivated her heart more than, you know, being busy with the things of this world. Right. Hmm. So both of them, you 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 put them on the same balance. I mean, the sense that one was serving through through in the kitchen and getting the food ready, and the other one was just being there. No, I wouldn't put them on the same balance because mm -hmm. uh, uh, when uh, Martha got so engrossed in things of uh, doing, uh, she lost the proximity of being close to Jesus mm, mm -hmm. and understanding Jesus more as a person mm. than, uh, you know, some many a time we get so caught up with service, 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 mm -hmm. service, that we forget the core and gist of what we, whom we are serving. True, true. Yep. Whom Very we true. are serving. Not and I think, whom we are serving. Yeah. And I think this happens even in ministry. 
where yeah. we get caught up with you know activities and yes. things and then we uh, we miss out on the person who we are serving serving yes so true yeah right interesting now let's move on to the next one so let's look at this one doesn't see doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while i do all the work tell her to come and help me that's what she told you. okay now so now from martha's question to jesus right can you identify her tone what is what kind of tone would she have used she said lord don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself do you think anger. her tone anger yes. angry angry what anger, anger. mm mm-hmm. may uh, don't you get oh, irritation maybe angry maybe maybe angry is a bit too uh, maybe irritation like jesus you could say irritation okay maybe maybe when anger the different levels of anger yes. okay agitated yes she was agitated and who was she agitated with with the mary with with mary no. with mary lord don't you care so was her agitation also with jesus yes oh. don't you care and then okay now if you look at this rhetorical question here right okay so and then there's a there's a rhetoric so and then uh, when a question is not when we ask a question and you don't expect a reply because she doesn't wait for jesus reply why do you think she asks this rhetorical question here no don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself she's not waiting for jesus to give any reply then she says tell her to help me why do you think she just why why is this rhetorical question here maybe she is jealous that even she would want to sit and listen to jesus but oh, i never better she thought of it i never thought about it yes. working <laughs> yeah because it's important be, because to you. yeah most of the times it happens to us where we would want to spend time talking to the guests but Uh, in turn will be uh, busy preparing something uh-huh. for them mm-hmm. so maybe she's jealous that her sister took the better portion yeah okay yes very true i never thought about that yes so true okay now okay now if you look at this right now i'm going to this one the my the me the myself help me so in once just in this short phrase right so many of this my me myself me what can you self pity self centered self pity okay. self centered self i specialist <laughs> <laughs> you know i specialist so you think that also is a weakness in the sense that she is yes, sometimes yes. sometimes yeah it's sometimes at home right like in the weekends i'm like doing so much and then i get so instead of my work being a blessing to my family it becomes a curse actually because i'm like you know all this work i'm doing and no one ever is to do it so that it's all so my work becomes it's not the fruit it doesn't become the fruit that i'm offering as a gift so that i think many times i'd be fall into that trap what is the focus here work is say again the work is a focus work is a focus and also the fact that uh excuse yeah. me i am doing all of this and then i think that's when we women know we tend to become so grumpy and so naggy and all that no we just like do the work and then we there's no love because you just like have to do it no one said to do it and there's no appreciation from she everyone so not blessed lack with of the work of our lack hands. of self control the fruit of the spirit yeah but have have we found ourselves in that situation before i have yes almost every week Oh, every day we do complain about things <laughs> yeah hello ah oh, yes so yeah so it's like i'm doing work but at the same time there's no i'm not doing work because i i i, ha- I have to do it I, i i mean i do it because i have to do it and there's no it's not it doesn't become a love offering okay and i'm and, not and, doing it i'm not doing it for the glory of god yeah and finally this exclamation mark here let's just look at this exclamation mark she says uh, tell her to help me and a very short and, and if you look at it even in literature right so i i teach language per se so if you look at this long sentence 
she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care? And then suddenly, tell her to help me. This short sentence, in fact, with, a, with an exclamation mark. So why do you think that exclamation mark is there? What, what is the meaning of that exclamation mark? And the Bible is, is, a is a literary book. First, and even when you read it as, as a piece of literature and you look at all of these things that come, they can give you added meaning. So why do you think the exclamation mark is there? To lay emphasis, to exaggerate. Exactly. For what purpose in this context? Yes. To, to avoid what are you trying to tell Jesus? Mother? Do what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> yes. She became the boss, no? Tell her, to, she's telling Jesus, okay, now you, you make sure you do this. You tell her to help me and I don't care. You just do it. So she becomes the instructor here. But then you, you, afterwards, when you look at Jesus' answer, he, he, he puts, he put, I think, very gently, he puts her in place. Okay, so, uh, so my question here, did Martha do what most sisters would do in that situation? Yes, right. Obviously. Okay, let's move on. So another thing that I, I picked up is it's not fair. Give me some qualities of Mata. Hopefully I can write it down. I can't. Give me some qualities of Mata. If you Mata is very dominating. Dominating, okay. Spirit, dominating spirit. Okay, so, I think I think people can annotate if they want. So you can go there. If you can write on this on this this space, you can. So look for text. So someone said she was very calculative. Dominating. Oh. She was very calculative. She didn't serve with a willing heart. She was. Very calculative. Okay. Wait. Dominating. Then others also can write if you want. She's calculative. Okay. Anything else? Didn't have a servant heart. Work oriented. <laughs> Work. Uh, I'm planning. Why can't can't I type? Okay, no servant art. Someone else. Okay, Complaining. others also you can type if you want to. Uh, someone said what work oriented? Huh? Work oriented. Oh, oops. Why did that three come? Okay, someone says she's a complainer. Okay, complainer. Complainer. She didn't have a servant heart. Yeah. So no servant heart. We said that. Yeah. And anyone else? You can, you can, uh, can, can people Jennifer. type in? Uh, no, I think they can uh, do it only on chat, Joyce. Oh, you can do it on so, chat. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Only you can. And no, everyone can annotate actually. Yeah, uh, but it's not happening. I'm using my phone today. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not okay, using okay. a laptop. So ah, okay, I'm also okay. unable ah, okay. to do it. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. So, any other qualities of Martha? So yeah, she's dominating. Okay. Say again? Jealous. Oh, okay. She's jealous. Okay. Oops. Okay, what else? Maybe she's a better cook than Mary. <laughs> okay. She's a she's a better cook. Martha was okay. very responsible. Ah, okay, she's responsible. Probably she takes on a heavier load, right? Of the family, maybe. Yes. Workaholic. Yeah, we've, I've, I think that's work oriented. Work uh, hospitable. Ah, okay, yes, yeah, she's hospitable. Yes. So her kind of hospitality is different from Mary's hospitality. She's hospitable. It's interesting when, when you're like in, your, in our, my Bible, right? So, oh, I don't have my Bible. So, the Bible is full of texts. So it's good when we have to, to write down, to make notes every time in our Bible, whenever someone says anything. So I, I stopped taking down notes in exercises book, exercise books because it's all there. And I, when, I, when I'm reading the Bible, I can't have this kind this, um, this annotation. So whenever I'm listening to talks, I always write down in my Bible. My Bible looks really messy, but uh, I used. 
Okay, so anything else that we want to share about Mata? So Mata is dominating, she's calculated, she doesn't have a servant heart. Oh, that's really a servant heart. Okay, she's jealous, she's work oriented, she's better cook, she's responsible, she's hospitable. Okay, thank you very much. Now let's move on to the next slide. Um, so she says it's not fair. Why isn't it moving? Okay. So like Martha, have I displayed the qualities of Martha in my relationship with Jesus? So this is where I would like us to go very quickly. So about three minutes. So one minute thinking time, how many of us are here? So there's um, 14 of us. So I'll put us in, um, there's a breakout room. So I'll stop share. So we, we just share with the person. Um, breakout, oh, we can't go to breakout rooms. Hmm. Okay, no worries. And we'll just be here. Uh, so yeah, so maybe we can share here. Okay, have I displayed the qualities of Martha in my relationship to Jesus? So we looked earlier, right? Her, her qualities. We saw a number of her qualities. We, we thought that she was a complainer. So maybe anyone would like to share any recent as much as you can. I like for, to share. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is there somebody else wanting to share then? Me, I like to talk, but doesn't matter. You go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'd like to share on the one that I recommended, Better Cook. Uh -huh. So uh, there was a time when every Sunday evening I would go to cook at a home for street boys because, um, uh, you know, uh, we, I belong to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul that mm -hmm. uh, does uh, a service of the poorest of the poor. So the better cook thing, I got, I was suddenly reminded of that. And I was thinking that people would call me and they would say, come and uh, be part of this intercessory ministry or be part of that and be part of something to do in the, like in the midst of the church. And I would say, no, 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 I have to go to cook for those boys. Mm -hmm. So that is something that, yes, probably I have displayed that, at least that quality. So was it a positive one or you think that maybe there's something that you need uh, to caution yourself? Uh, that was just a weekly thing. Uh -huh. And I was thinking that, uh, you know, it's okay because I'm going there only once a week. Mm. Whereas the rest of the week, I was spending one hour in the Blessed Sacrament at that point in time before Mass. Mm. So now when I look at it, I think um, I, think I was blessed with that also. Mm. Because I'm not getting to do it now anymore mm. because of the pandemic. Mm. Thank you, Rachel. Anyone else? Look at the qualities of Martha, which we shared earlier, and how have you displayed that, those qualities? So for me, like I would always complain, I would always complain to, to, I have this habit of horrible habit of trying to uh, comparing. So I'd look at, look at people and say, look, look, no, look at that person. They, they, their life seems like, so they come to church, all like so happy, so happy family, all so loving, so, so just complain because I like to compare. So I, I would compare myself with people who might think have got it better than me. And uh, so, and I felt that the Lord was not even, not even answering any of my, he's just not interested in my life. He's more interested in everyone else's life. So I didn't tell, I didn't tell the Lord, Lord, you go, go ahead, go answer those prayers because those people are more important to you, that kind of thing. And um, so I, I do, so, uh, so what I do now, my check and balance is that whenever I get into that complaining mode, I will tell myself to look at my blessings. Uh, so when my, when I count my blessings, uh, and the Lord actually told me, so I had a, I had a prayer journal. And so the Lord told me, okay, stop. Okay. Now, because every time, every time, every day I would write a petition, petition, petition. And whenever I, so the Lord told, okay, every time I answer a prayer, just put a smiley face. Then after, so I began to do that. Then after, so I do, after a few weeks or what I turned and I, and I felt the Lord was telling me, okay, now turn and see how many smiley faces you have. So many smiley faces. I was like, oh my God, you really actually do answer prayers. 
So I, so now I make myself focus on my blessings. Yeah. Anyone else? Have I displayed the qualities of Martha in my relationship? So we saw Martha was jealous. She was work oriented. She was, she was a complainer. She was, yeah, jealous. Right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so now look at Jesus' response. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken from her. So the Lord shows himself to be a dental. Excuse me, I'm still... The boss here, kind of, but so very gently. Wow. Let's look at what Jesus has to tell her. Yeah. The first thing he says, my dear Martha, if I was Jesus, I would have probably just told her off. How dare you speak to me like that? Hello, I'm Jesus. I'm like, God, don't you know who I am? What do you get from this? My dear Martha. Compassionate. Compassionate, love. yes. Love, love. Unconditional love. Yes. Jesus understands everyone. Yeah. He understands. Very tender love. Tender love. My dear. And Martha told him off, you know. Martha tells Jesus off. So I'm just writing down this a few things. Tender love. Oh, he says, no, my dear Martha. Imagine someone is telling you off and you turn and tell the person, my dear Rachel. Rachel, like, maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i like so angry with Rachel and she tells me, my dear Joyce. I'm like, ooh, okay. How lovely if you can actually turn around and tell people who scold us, my dear, I tell my children, my dear Sasha, my dear Sonia. Some, so much to learn from Jesus, just that response, yeah? Patience. Someone, mm, patience, yes. He was really the gentleness. Yeah. Gentleness. Enduring way. Yeah. Patience. How he was. Gentle. Meekness and humbleness, yeah. Gentle, meek, humble. Humble. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. And the sense that he did not care about his Godhead and that time, no Trinity, nothing of this. Just address person to person. Meek, humble. Someone said, "Engineering." Caring. Caring. Yes, he was. With some other qualities of Jesus, his caring. Some more. Caring. He understood her. He understood what her problem was. What she was. Where she was coming from. Yeah, her. yeah. It goes and to very gently. Yes. Understanding. Yeah. Basically, his love. Yes. Yes. Basically, it's his love for humanity. And for those two sisters he had. Mm. Yep. Some more qualities of Jesus. Just from this, my dear Martha. Any more qualities cordial. of Jesus? Very cordial. Cordial would be cordial. Uh, I'll put that down. Cordial shows a little bit of distance, but fine. Yeah, he was very cordial. He could have he could have been nasty. He could have just said Martha. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> he said, hey, you, excuse me, woman, go back to the kitchen. Yeah. I'll just spend time with Mary. Acceptable. 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 Okay. He really cared for her because he approached her gently and, and very, uh, very kindly he spoke to her. He yes. cared for her. Yeah. He was so looking he was... Beyond, yeah, beyond her. Outburst. She was looking beyond that and said, "Dear Martha," which meant he really cared for her, yeah. cared for her spiritual life. Yeah. yeah, I like I like that look beyond the outburst. And then when when we say no, he did not react. No, there was no. He did not take it personally. Also, many of the many of us would take like, "Oh, how dare you speak to me like that?" No, we take take things personally, but we don't understand people. What is their intention? Yeah. 
Let's you wanted see. her to calm down. Yeah, okay. You wanted Correct. her to calm down. Yes, true. Okay, some more? He says, my dear. Say again, say again. I didn't get that. My, as if he, that's his. Ah, the possession, yes. He doesn't need dear, Martha. Mm, yes. He means a lot. He means a lot to her. Mm, yes. Anything else? Trying to win a win her attention. Okay. Win her attention. Oh. More, 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 more qualities of Jesus. Let's give the man some credit here. Yeah. <laughs> affectionate. Man. Yes, he's affectionate. Okay, so good qualities. We've got some nice qualities of Jesus just from this alone. Just from this alone. Just from this alone. He's compassionate. He's full of love. He's, his possession, where he calls her, just a my dear Martha. He gives her a sense of belonging. You, yeah, you're, I'm, I'm not isolating you. You are in this circle. You're there, but you're still here with me. It's beyond the outburst. Okay, right. Let's move on. How much more time do I have? Got just a few more slides. Okay, you and then he, Jesus tells, he continues, no? he says, you are worried and upset over all these details. So you are worried and upset shows. What does it show? You are worried and upset. What does it show? Irritated. That she was irritated. Yeah, okay. She was irritated, yes. Agitated. Yeah, irritated and agitated, yes. What was Jesus trying to tell her? You are worried and upset. In other words, he's trying to tell her not to get upset, not to be anxious. Yes, not, not to not, be worried. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. To calm down. Don't. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> yes. Just because you cannot get an A cost dinner for me. Don't be yes. anxious. Yes. Yes. Come sit. You to come and sit down and listen. Yeah. <laughs> was Jesus concerned about all the food that, that that was going to? So, so some one of the saints apparently said that Jesus would have just been happy with a one pot meal. Yeah. Yeah. So that wouldn't have taken much time. Also, I, for me, I said I thought for me in my mind I would have told Jesus and Mark and Mary uh, to to move to the kitchen and then everyone help prepare dinner. So I've even given Jesus some work. I would have done that. Uh, okay. So, I think for Jesus, food was not important. Yes. I think for Jesus, relationship and love, uh, radiating love, um, uh, you know, was more important to him than food and uh, all the other frills that surround his yes. visitation. Food and the display, maybe. Uh, maybe yes, I'll just display. say the, Austin, if his visitation to the home was to show affection, love, uh, because uh, I'm sure they lost their brother and the uh, all, you know, or he had just visited them for um, to build up that love and relationship, affection, to show his affection. Food was not mm -hmm. important to the Lord at all. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> and today we tell her. <laughs> Oh my gosh, should we've taken culinary to its extreme, right? Yes. Those are the days. Yes. What did our parents cook for us? One one curry they'll throw in our face and That's hopefully there's a we pay more importance. We pay more importance to um, all these things. And uh, I'll give you a small example. Uh, here in the zone last week, the priest was to visit the houses and bless the houses and have a 45 minutes talk with the family after the pandemic to know uh, what they went through. And people were calling back and forth and, uh, you know, preparing a meal and preparing all the uh, fineries for him to eat and drink and all. And, uh, and I said, what if Jesus was coming? What would we do? 
he is just a priest, all right? Well, if Jesus was coming, what would he do? So we today's uh, focus is more on um, entertaining and hospitality and food and drink and cleaning up the house and everything and keeping it ready for just the parish priest of the parish. What about mm. Jesus who comes today every day to us in our heart to the communion? What about Jesus who comes, who is with us? in us, moving with us. We are living in his presence, but still we pay no importance to all that. True. The king of kings. Yeah. So Jesus, Jesus is going to come down and just give him bread and wine. That's all enough. He'll be very yeah. happy with that. Yes. But would we, but the question is, would we do it? The question is, would we do it? <laughs> I mean, and this is so uh, true in, in our day-to-day -day life, not today. Today we have taken it some our weddings and all that's like crazy the amount of food it's our our Sunday lunches not only it's like everything something new cook something new I mean we're not satisfied with the old the focus is lost yes so all totally all lost. these so and then he say, he says his word right so he says something about this he says all these details. All these details. Finally, something, something, yes. So we have, so it's in other words, for us also, we are focusing today on a lot of details in our life. We're not just happy with the car that will take us from one place to another. We're looking at the model, looking at how good it'll look. We're looking at, at uh, uh, we've taken it so far. If Jesus, thank, thank God Jesus didn't come in today's world. If he came, my gosh, he would have. He's there. He's, he's living God. He's there. He, he's, he's I mean, what I mean is that physically, him. if he was here physically and he came, he would, he, I don't know what kind of names he would call us. Those days, they, he just called them with, with what, what names he used to call them? You brood of vipers. Ah. <laughs> so, Jesus was, if you look at um, here, Martha was distracted by her many tasks. And then Jesus tells her only one thing is necessary. Only one thing is necessary. In other words, only one dish is necessary. Only one, whatever it is, is necessary. Worried about all the one thing worth being concerned about. See, she had many. So Martha was distracted by her many tasks. Too much. She had just taken it over and beyond. Of course, a guest is there. He needs to be served. But she had just, like, uh, you know, and like I said, not a one pot meal. Now, what is your understanding of the phrase one thing? And how does it resonate with your life? Maybe time to share. I mean, in our, in our, in our lives to today, right? What is that one thing that we have taken too far and we've made it many things in our life? The How word. does it resonate? Say again. The word of God. I word of God. What is the one thing? Yeah, okay. But can we just survive on that? I, what, are, what I'm, uh, my question, probably I, I may not have made myself very clear. How have, in our lives, right, every time we have only that one thing which is necessary. It could be cooking, it could be, it could be even work, it could be anything that we possess. So our one thing has expanded into a number of things. Could be worship. Uh, no, what, what I'm saying is that, like, say, for instance, let, let's look at this analogy of the example of the someone coming to the house, right, to cook. Okay, so we spend so many hours of our, of our cooking, right? But Jesus says just one thing. We are bound more by the temporal and not the eternal. Yes, true. So in other words, we can, we can set apart so much of time for other things, give other things uh, our time, because we spend, okay, I'm just again going back to the analogy of cooking. We spend so much of our time cooking, trying to please. And why do we do that? Is it to please others? Yes. It's because we have forgotten the who is the center of our life. To make Jesus, we have to make Jesus the center of our life. When Jesus is the center of that, our focus will be on him mm -hmm. and not on the frills. Yes, not on what the frills. So what are the, what are the frills that exist in our life today? 
So I, oh. I'm, I'm looking at my life. Okay, so so we look at, we examine my life. So in my life, I would think, yes, the frills would be like in the sense that, okay, my family, yes, we've taken cooking. We don't just think of one thing. It's always extra. And then even with, um, yeah, so I, I would think that uh, to start off with, it would be our cooking and also what else? Cleaning. Yes. Tama, obsessed with cleaning. Cleaning, yes. Yes, obsessed with, obsession with cleaning. Tama, obsessed with socializing. Yeah. So let's talk about our lives. Time to examine our life. What is it that I, what I need to focus on in my life? That one that I have really expanded and made into many things. More on eternity. Say again? More on the eternal. So how does that reflect in your life? In your life, how, where do you think you have lost it? Yeah, uh, because I'm also quite like Makta. Yeah. <laughs> in, what, in what ways? <laughs> it's okay. What, what you say, we all share the same sin, you know, by the way. All of us. When one person says, okay, this is my weakness, I don't, I'm not thinking who is my weakness too. So it's good to vocalize our, our failings. No, most of us women... Uh, we are preoccupied with serving the family, laying out the best food on the table, cleaning and caring for the children. That our focus is totally lost on. Yes, true. On so, the, so, so, on so again, what, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get us to to be more internal. So mm. in my life, so in my life, so maybe everyone can just share. Yeah, in my life, I think yes, I have taken this too far like for me okay if you look at my lipstick also i i got ah no no my my, my necklaces also I, I like all different colors and then i got carried in shoes at one season i was like okay i want i want i want all the colors as many colors as i can so not that i'm satisfied with with the so that i've extended that i've taken that a bit too far so yeah so it's some personal anyone else would like some people very quiet i do have not heard from Gladys, she's quietly just listening to everyone since. No, I did tell a few points. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I think Anyone? for the past two, uh, almost two to three weeks, because of exams of my daughter, mm -hmm. so I was too much concentrating on her and then doing household work, cooking, cleaning, and my personal prayer was a bit shattered. So I think that that personal prayer I have to improve now. That is what I felt like in my right. life. Right. So oh, oh, too much on that you felt. Like yes. Focus. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Same with me. Uh, even I, my focus is too much on kids. It's like mm -hmm. right from the eating, their studies, and every every minute details. It's say almost uh, twenty three hours. I only think about kids. Right. That one hour that I keep for myself. What do you think Jesus will be telling you today? Just like Martha, don't, don't go into details. Do one the thing. better one. One yes. thing. <laughs> yeah, don't go into details. So Jesus is not a god of details. He doesn't want. To, he's fine with with. Uh... So sometimes we try. We try and be the best, no? We we look at other moms and we're like, okay, oh, their kids, my kids also must must be on par. It's always a sense of. For me, uh, I have been, um, in the last few, uh, say, couple of weeks, I've realized my personal prayer is always being pushed and pushed and pushed, uh, sometimes so late that I'm not even able to sit and, and worship the Lord. So uh, the other day I realized, I said, it doesn't matter what happened. My first thing will be personal prayer in the morning. I will not exercise. I'll not do my stretches, breathing, nothing. Just get out of bed and sit and finish my worship and praise. And from the time I'm doing that in the last couple of weeks, I feel my day is going so beautifully. There are days I have an exercise, which is very important for my spine. But I said, Lord, that's only the temporal. Uh, I ask you to uh, sanctify my life and prepare me for the eternal. So I feel much happier now. Uh, I finish my praise and worship the first thing before I do anything else in the morning. And then everything comes after that False and I haven't finished it completely it does not matter but I've done my my first heart's um, desires to worship the Lord and that gift he has given me right. thanks 
So I also, uh, so that was, uh, so what I also do intentionally do every time is, so every week I tell myself, okay, I'm going to contact some other person. Because sometimes no, we can get, so, so you look at Jesus here, right? So Jesus has finished his prayer time in the morning. He gets up early and then he goes to the mountains. I don't know how he climbs the mountains, but he gets up to the mountains and he prays. Then after he's also with the people. Sometimes you just wonder whether we have also lost that. So for me, I intentionally make it a point. Okay, this week, I'm going to contact at least two people and just touch base with them. Because sometimes I can get so caught up with prayer and worship and sessions and all that, I lose touch. And maybe someone, sometimes, sometimes it, it happens so often, and I'm sure it must have also happened in your, your life. And suddenly I just, I just send a message to someone and they're like, Oh, Joyce, thank you. Oh, thank you for, for connecting with me. I'm just in the space where I just feel so. And then we end up talking. Or someone else said, I'm feeling so down. Suddenly, someone sends me a message and I'm like, oh, thank you. for. I just needed to hear that. So sometimes we also need one another in this space. So as much as we give time to Jesus, we also need to give time, just like Jesus, no? He gave time to Martha and Mary. How much time are we giving to each other? Or we just like in that sense, so focused on my family, so focused on my work, that I got no time for anyone else. Only me, my kids, like Mata, no? I, me, myself, my, 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 I, 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 I. Jesus is going to, when we see Jesus, going to say, yeah, I gave you a family, yes. But there's a bigger family who also needed you. So that, that kind of attention. Sometimes we give too much of attention to everyone else. So there's also that, that kind of balance. So that's where the examine comes. So every day, you, and I really, really, really invite you to do the exam and say, Ignatius, no, he, he, in fact, he told his, he told his priest, even if you miss mass, it's not, I have no problem, but do the exam twice, because we can be going for mass every day, and then we don't even self-reflect, and we don't think, uh, we don't stop at the end of the day and see where, what is my, what happened here, what are my highs, what are my lows, where did I feel God's presence, where did I not feel God's presence? And then to look forward to the next day. Okay, tomorrow is going to be better than today. So if we don't examine ourselves at the end of the day, it's we're just living on. Right? And Mary has discovered, and it'll not be, okay, Mary has discovered that it'll be, not be taken, it and it'll not be taken away from her. Mary has discovered. So it doesn't come very easily. It's, it, it takes it takes effort not to put that alarm in the morning to wake up. For me, it's a constant thing. Oh, I'm ready at 10, 10 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I need at least six, seven hours of sleep. So I'm like constantly regulating my... So you, we, we, there's no pain, no gain. Some of the saints apparently did not even have enough sleep. But they survived. So I'm worrying about my dark circles. So what if I don't sleep, I will have dark circles. So I have to... So I have to yeah, my prayer time gets affected. So it says, if you look at the, uh, why does Jesus use the verb here, discovered, discovered. Mary has discovered it. She yes. has found it was more important. Found. Yes. She has, she has looked for it. She's found it. So if we look, we, we, we will discover it. But if we don't look, we won't, we won't discover it. So how do you look? But again, how do we look? How do we look for Jesus? In our life? We look at uh, what uh, gives us joy and peace more. Mm -hmm. What gives us joy and peace, yes. What gives us joy and peace and uh, serenity and calmness in our whole being is uh, we look for that. Mm -hmm. And when we discover that something of being with Jesus gives us that, then we prefer to be with Jesus than to uh, be serving like Martha all the time. Yeah. Yes, so true. And if you look at how Martha's initial accusation of Jesus, right? Jesus' passage, now contrast with his response to her. She has taken, and, I, and it will not be taken from her. So when we make, take that first step, Jesus will make sure that it means that. So it's for us to, so sometimes I put it, I'll throw it on Jesus and I'll say, Lord, you, if you wake me up, I'll pray. I'll throw it on Jesus. So then after I say, Lord, you didn't wake me up, I didn't pray. Too bad. You, you should have called me. But then the Lord is always like, oh, we have to take the first step. 
we have to take their effort. He will not come in first. Then I, I use this. I use this trick for many, many, many years until I, I think this happened when I was in Bangalore. I, I never learned my lesson. So I told the I told the Holy Spirit, okay, I'm very smart. I won't put the alarm. I'll tell the Holy Spirit you wake me up. So it's like putting on. So I told the Holy Spirit, okay, wake me up at four o'clock in the morning. So at four o'clock I woke up. I woke up. Oh, oh, and I said, okay, oh, I was just so sleepy. Give me another half an hour. So I went back to I went back to sleep. And again, four thirty, I around around uh, after some time, I I was wakened up again. And then I was like, oh no, I was like, okay, just. Give me some more time, Holy Spirit. I just need to sleep some more. And then after some time, you won't be, you'll be surprised. I felt someone slap me on the face. Like I got up. There's no pain, but it was like so hard. I just got up. I was wondering. Yeah, I looked at my husband. He was fast asleep. It was a hard slap, but it was there was no pain. And I got up and was like, oh, okay, okay. I get the message. Don't, don't play. After that time, I don't I don't remember myself even asking the Holy Spirit again to wake me up. So. Uh, yeah, so I think that that first thing we have to go, we have to put that alarm to wake up. That's something which I have learned now through devotion. Have I put devotion to Christ and His Word first, or am I more concerned about doing good deeds? Something to think about. Like if you look at, yeah, like there are many people, right? We need these folks. What can I do? They, they like in in our church for anything. There are a lot of people who do the work. We need them around. These are the these are the matas. Because for them, like someone said mentioned earlier, right? For them, it's a service. This is the way I serve Jesus. But the problem is that they feel the pressure. Oh, they are just so aware of what, what, what is everyone doing? We have to get it right. We have to put this. It's just so they they go into all the details. So that that's one thing, one thing which many some of you have said that, yeah, that's wrong. The details. The finer details, which Jesus is not concerned about. So, if if we look at Martha, she's like, jur, 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 everything, hundred one things, getting this done, putting her, putting her, putting her, so many things. But Jesus said just one thing. So yeah. Um. So we'll just. I think we don't have much time. So my final question: Are you? And I living more like Mata or Mary. Something for us to take back. When is it that I am called to be Mata? And even if I'm called to be Mata, not to look at the details in my life, but then I'm like Mary. So the point of this whole story is that service is good, worship is better. And yeah. So thank you very much, everyone. So let's just quickly maybe put on chat or just share the one thing that my take home message for today. Just that.